for our latest live stream, Reeds versus Felstead, on this final weekend of schoolboy rugby in this bizarre 2020 2021 season. That's been so great to see this rugby. Alongside me, Angus Savage from Next Gen 15, is Chris Roberts from Samurai. Afternoon, Chris. Afternoon, Angus. It's uh, great to be here to say on behalf of uh, Samurai Sportswear, we're, we're absolutely delighted to be supporting Next Gen 15 uh, and certainly our support of uh, our schoolboy rugby. So we're about to get underway. On the left-hand side, we have Reeds kicking off. We have Felstead through Ollie Redman. That's a big, strong carry from Reeds right off the bat. Tackle! Tackle! Reeds have had a couple of warm-up games against Gordon, so they should be well attuned to the physicality. Felstead, this is their first game of the entire season. It's just absolutely great to have the opportunity for these lads to come out and represent their first 15. Absolutely brilliant in the lead-up to half-term. Early on, some big, big carries from Reeds, looking to punch a few holes in this Felstead defence, see if they're ready. Felstead holding firm, though. A little darting snipe there from Miles Billington, the Reed scrum half. Looks like Reeds are going to keep it tight early on, Chris. Yeah, and as you can see, you know, Felstead have got a, a really strong defensive line, not committing too many players to that breakdown, and they've got their just rewards there, having a go at the opposition breakdown and getting the penalty. Felstead, of course, coached by uh, Andrew Le Chevalier, uh, otherwise known as Chevs, due to, due to having a, a slightly tricky surname to pronounce. Reeds, coached by Tony Talbot, both of them involved with the Lambs rugby setup. Incidentally, the Lambs actually playing this weekend uh, in an old boys sevens tournament. So uh, the spirit of rugby and that fast and freestyle remains uh, remains high. Seven. Early chance here for Felstead then, attacking line out, five metres out. Of course, remember, no driving off the line out, so this will have to come off the top. Taken by Washington into the midfield. Finley Scott there, taking the carry up. Washington again. Wide, oh. You can certainly see the attacking attacking intent there from Felstead. Some uh, quick recycled ball from that from that first breakdown. A little bit slower on that second breakdown. Just allowed Reeds just to get that shape in defence and obviously putting uh, that Felstead pass under pressure. It's an interesting dynamic with the not being able to drive off the line out. It allows the defence to sort of set up knowing what must be coming, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it just means that uh, you know teams are going to have to be that little bit more creative. The Caterpillar Ruck has made its way into schoolboy rugby. It's a good box kick there, though. Max Tomlinson at scrum half, younger brother of Miles, former Felstead skipper. Felstead playing with uh, with Robson Groom at 12, and he looks as though he's stepping into the 10 channel quite often. Strong carry from Albert Smith. Find the hole, find the hole. Number five there, Hugo Morley. Been to the Felstead coaching staff before. He's he's made the trip from from Monaco earlier this year to be part of the Felstead setup. So keep an eye out for him. You'll yeah, be down there later this week, won't you? I'd I'd, I'd love to say yes, but uh, sadly it's uh, at the other Sunshine Coast of Eastbourne where I'll be over half term. Um, you can you can definitely see the uh, the passion from both sides. Um, early early days, as we said earlier, you know perhaps a, a first first and last opportunity for some of these upper six to wear that first 15 shirt. Uh, it'll just be interesting to see as uh, bodies tire a little bit as the match goes on. Do we see a bit more space? 
another attacking line out then for for Felstead, but just as they as they organise themselves, I suppose that's the the special thing about these games. Really, it's just it's about the opportunity for these guys to actually get that chance to pull on the shirt, isn't it? Absolutely, and you speak to anybody who have represented their first 15 at schools, it's very, very special. They're playing for the pride of the school, they're playing with their mates, it's just a wonderful opportunity. Uh, I've got my first 15 shirt on my wall in my study and it takes pride of place. Gilbert throws in, oh, we've got a move at the front there. Carey there, the number eight, carrying around the front, sneaky move. And now Tomlinson goes wide. Barnett has a dart. Quick ball key here. Superb work on the floor there. Reed's number 16. I'll tell you his name in a second. Yeah, re really good defence there from Reed's. It looks like they're, they're certainly putting one player in on that defensive breakdown, and they got just rewards there for, th for that, uh, that, that jackal effort there. Well done. Ellis Dunford there showing exactly why he got picked the Surrey under-15s in 2019. Brilliant work on the floor from the young flanker. Carey there with the the chip over the top from number eight. Covered well though by Sam Rowe for Reeds. First chance we've seen there of Reeds just moving it through the hands a little bit, moving slightly wider, isn't it? Yeah, they've certainly shown their attacking attacking intent, perhaps um, slightly nervy after that missed touch off that penalty, but yeah, certainly looking to run it out of their 22, uh, and it's great to, see, great to see the attack. There should be some space. Reed's defend, uh, Felstead, sorry, defending with a lot of men in the backfield. If Reed's fancy it, they could probably go wide. Felstead's certainly looking to put a, a hard press defense on Reed's there, and as you're right, yeah, the space is opening now. He's away. Flying down the right-hand wing, touch. Oh, and he's just got that down, I think. Fantastic work. Yang is normally the commentator's curse, but you called that absolutely spot on. I'm used to being in the co-commentary seat, that's why. <laughs> Joe Sheridan there, flying down the right-hand touchline. Just touching it down in the corner as the cover defence came across. Absolutely wonderful piece of rugby. Yeah, and as we said, that Felster defence was, was quite narrow. They were looking for a rush defence to really come up and put some pressure on Reeds. Reeds were just uh, able to just get that offload in midfield, and as a result, there was space out wide, and it was a terrific finish. Yeah, it was an impressive, impressive speed there from Joe Sheridan. First 15 debut today as well. Special moment for him. With the conversion, we've got Finley Scott standing over it, sporting something of a Hamish Watson haircut. And we're saying it's great to see the players on the field. We've got some uh, glitterati on the side of the field as well. Former uh, England coach Dick Best is here watching and uh, former England Sevens legend Chris Sheesby in the crowd as well. Schoolboy rugby, it attracts the stars. Scott lines it up then. That's oh, a wonderful conversion from Scott. Straight between the uprights, right on the touchline. Fantastic stuff. That was, of course, the, the right side for him being left-footed, but he still slotted it straight through. What a lovely kick. And slightly against the run of play, that try, really, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. We're, um, we're, we're seeing very, very open rugby, as you would expect. Uh, these guys are out here to enjoy themselves. But uh, also, there is the pressure there. It just goes to show you what happens. One, one little missed tackle or, or one offload, uh, the opportunity is there for players to go the length of the field, and we saw it not far off a 50-metre run in there. Billy Chandler leaving the field injured, unfortunately, for Felstead. It's a, a, a tough way to, to end your, your one and only game this season. And perhaps it was it was in that tackle that just, just caught his head on the wrong side, possibly, and that just allowed Reeds to get that space out wide. We, of course, wish him well, but I know that he'll be absolutely delighted to have taken the field initially anyway. Absolutely. 
Kiefer Felstead to bounce back early here? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it, it's early early stages in the game. We've got a lot to play for. Um, as we said a few minutes ago, things are perhaps just starting to settle down a little bit, and it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top in this next passage of play. Well, so they just strayed offside at the kickoff, but the runners did well to hold their run. And we're into that familiar pattern of aggressive play around the, around the fringes here from Reeds. Felstead with the penalty though. Looks to me like that's number seven Cooper Baker on there with the work on the floor. It's cer certainly him that's felt the after effects. And that's really impressive. That must have been about the third turnover we've seen at the tackle. Uh, any of you who are more familiar with watching the game at the top level, we don't often see that. Uh, the the schoolboy game, I believe, is absolutely pure. And within that, the amount of work and the effort they put in to really work on their basics and technique, uh, we can we can see that to the fore there. Perhaps worth noting that uh, Cooper Baker is a is a very keen boxer, and uh, he's been playing with the first team since year 11. So he's uh, I suppose he's used to that physicality in and around the breakdown. Well, he'll certainly be used to that control physicality. It's what's required in both boxing and rugby. So Ollie Redmond's going to line up the penalty here for Felstead to narrow the deficit. And he just squeaks it in on the, on the right-hand side. So 11 minutes in. Reeds with a 7-3 lead. It's been quite a fast-paced game so far, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you can see with the, the kick for goal there, both sides will want to go out and enjoy themselves and play a certain style, but there is going to be an intent to win here as well. It's Miles Billington kicking off the scrum half for Reeds. Puts it high and deep into the Felstead 22. We haven't really seen a lot of Felstead having to work their way out from their own, their own part of the field. Barnett with a high kick, a counter-attacking opportunity for Reeds. Sam Rowe scanning the field. Looked to go himself, perhaps the pass was on for him. And now we settle into that familiar pattern around the fringes. Billington just controlling things. Almost managing to milk a penalty there, Reeds. And Billington with the dart through. He's away, gets the offload free. Jack Weatherspoon. Just hauled down. Quick ball here, and it's up, but turned over. Turned over by Felstead. What a shame there. You can actually just see it's very, very clear of what Felstead are trying to do, both in the way that they are defending the breakdown and how they are defending putting, putting pressure. Uh, Reeds have managed to get a little offload away, broken down that defence and away they went. You would say that was that offload forced? Was the player not quite ready for it? But again, really, really great to see that attacking intent and certainly that offloading style is uh, getting their rewards. Well, I suspect as well we're going to find in, uh, in all the games that are going on over the course of today and tomorrow that um, people are going to feel like they have an, even more of a licence than usual to try things because there really is no tomorrow. Long clearance from Felstead puts them right on the attacking foot. It will be a Reese put in because it was a free kick. It's uh, another one of these law adapt adaptations due to COVID that uh, instead of a scrum, we have a free kick to the to the side that would have had the put in. So this will be a Reed's ball into the line out. I'm sure there'll be some players that are delighted without having scrums, but also for others, it might be a chance to catch their breath. Especially if you haven't played for a year. Reeds go off the top then, make good ground. Billington, I, I would imagine, will look short. Oh no, they go blind. Billington's going to hoist the box kick here. Plenty of height on it, maybe just too long. Now Archie Faulkner with a chance to counter-attack. Opted not to call the mark. 
and Tomlinson moves it wide. Counter could be on still despite the spillage. Powerful step there from Tom Jones. And Chris, I think we're, we're just seeing a, the ball went to deck, but we, we are seeing signs that Felstead want to, want to have a run. They want to play with a bit of width and ambition. It may go wrong sometimes, but that's the risk they're willing to take, I think. Yeah, some would say high risk, high reward, but actually when you're looking at an offload, all that actually is is a pass, pass in the tackle. Uh, that's practice that can be measured, um, and often it will be encouraged because it keeps that continuity, it keeps that ball alive, uh, and often as we found uh, early in the piece with some of the reads offloading, it enables that continuity and that um, the gaps to be had in the opposition defence. Robson Green with a big touch finder. Be a small delay while we get the ball back from that one. And Chris, of course, you're you're often on the lookout for for sevens players in your your involvement with Samurai. And what what sort of is it in a in a schoolboy player that you're you're looking at when you watch a game like this in in terms of looking at sevens players? I wouldn't necessarily say, I guess, there's, there's one set thing. The, the beauty with sevens is that there's still opportunities there for, for all shapes and sizes, uh, perhaps less so in the front row nowadays. We're, we're looking for that element of pace, which is important. At any level, you can't beat pace. Um, core skills are so important, that, that ability to, to pass and catch. And, and I know all the, the schoolboy coaches around here will do a lot of focus on that. So the, the passing and catching we're finding from a lot of the lads who are coming into the Samurai Academy are, are very, very strong. Uh, their, their footwork is, is often very, very strong as well. And it's just that ability of just adapting to that slightly higher level when, they are, when they're playing men's rugby. And as we say that, another, another skill important in sevens is being able to, to get yourself involved at the breakdown. And once again, we see fantastic work there on the deck. I think once more, it was Ellis Dunford. The diminutive flanker, but he's that's two steals he's managed to get inside of 20 minutes. Superb work in the air from Robson Groom, who, who's already looking like a standout player in this Felstead side in the opening 15 minutes here. And just as I talk him up. Outside to 22. Outside. Step back. Tomlinson steadies the ship, moves it wide. Tackle all the way. Big, powerful carry in midfield from his forwards. Advantage blue. Just knocked on Advantage there. Blue, knock on. Reads with the chance to attack. Still advantage. What can they do with the advantage here? Advantage over. Fast hands from Reeds. Can they move it wide? Finley Scott. Finley, Finley Scott almost to the line. Gets the offload away, but it's been... It's been lost forward. First knock on. No advantage coming to red. Well, Scott made the incisive break there, but just couldn't get the ball away at the crucial moment. Red scrum. Knock on blue. Very nearly a second try for Reeds. What is impressive, I think, from both and sides is how they're responding to the communication from the, the referee. The referee is uh, loud. We can hear him all the way on the other side of the field but these players are responding really, really well. So we're getting that competition at the breakdown, uh, and yet we're not getting the whistle being blown every 30 seconds. Water break. And we pause here for a water break. That'll be a feature of this game. Every, every quarter of the way through the game, we'll stop for a water break. It's, uh, it's part of the COVID protocols in this uh, slightly strange season. Each player will have their own individual water bottle, all numbered and labeled. A, an interesting opening 18 minutes there, though, Chris. I think that was uh, that was fast-paced, exciting. It's exactly what we, what we would have expected from both sets of players. The, the 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 passion is there from both teams. They'll all want to be making an individual and collective impression on this match. But I think it's a really good time to have this break. It's a balmy evening as well this evening, so the water will go down well. Just allows these players to just catch their breath ever so slightly and go back into it again. You can almost see each team are just starting to fall into to various styles. And despite the fact that neither of these teams would have had much time to train or practice because they would have been focusing on a lot of uh, internal exams, it's really quite impressive what we're seeing in front of us. 
mean twice. Well, this is this is one of those where even the quarter of the way through the game, Reed seven, Felstead three, and here are the teams. Reeds, front row, Kai Staple, Sheesby, Adam Spencer, and Jack Wotherspoon. Second row, Sebastian Hyde and Robert Lewis, and in the back row, Charlie Hancock, Zach Washington, and Dylan Thomas, who we've seen a number of carries from already. Miles Billingham at scrum half, who's been really controlling things. Mark Martin at fly half. In the centres, Finlay Scott and Harry Gray. And the back three, Adam Sadiq, Sam Rowe and Ellis Dunford. And to come on from the bench, big bench, we've got Thomas White, Zion Hunt, Tom Leslie, Joe Sheridan, William Palmer, Lewis Davies, Ben Routley, Ed Fortescue and Ollie Ognall. And we can expect to see every player on that team get plenty of game time without a shadow of a doubt. Over to Felstead then, and in the front row, we've got Billy Chandler, Tom Gilbert, and Ollie Kelly. In the second row, Albert Smith and Hugo Morley. In the back row, Jesse Robertson, Cooper Baker, who we've seen with a couple of storming turnovers already, and Hugo Carey. At nine, Max Tomlinson, and ten, Will Barnett. Josh Robson-Groom at 12, who we've seen stepping in at ten quite a lot as well. Tom Jones at 13, and in the back three, we've got Harry Clenshaw, Ollie Redman, and Archie Faulkner. On the bench, Dennis King, Henry Barker, Aidan Murphy, Cameron Wallace, David Lawson, Ryan Davis, Teddy Summers, John Taylor Anton, Pierre Goering, and Hamish Irvin. And again, we can expect all of those players to, to get plenty of game time throughout the course of this game. So it looks like Reed, Reed's already, but uh, Chefs has still got a few words to say to Felstead. What do you imagine he's, tell he's telling them at the moment? Well, it'll be interesting to see if we see any difference in this second quarter of the match. Is it just keep on going more of the same, or is it tweaking the style or the, or the way they're doing things? It looks to me as though, despite leading, Reeds perhaps need to, need to play perhaps further into the opposition half of the field. Possibly Felstead as well, perhaps, perhaps trying to go from their own line when it's not on sometimes. And that decision-making is absolute king. If you can bottle up decision-making, you'd be an absolute millionaire. But that said, if you look at that first Reeds try, that was them having a go from their own half and uh, scoring from 50 metres. So perhaps it is just assessing what's in front and making that, making that best decision for that moment. And we get underway again. Felstead, sorry, Reeds rather, out into the back line. And we see that familiar pattern, the one-out runner. Strong carry there from another one of our new men, Ollie Ognall, but turned over again by Felstead. And it's that man again, Cooper Baker. Yeah, he's been really impressive at the breakdown in this, in this early quarter of the game. We commented on the breakdown a few, a few minutes ago. Felstead with another turnover there, another penalty. And what is more impressive is that he was the, the first man in there, managed to hold his body weight, managed to hold on to the ball despite being smashed by the opposition to get off of it. Uh, really well played there. It's the hair. It's, it's always the hair. So Felstead with the attacking line out here. Again, this will come off the top, but we've already seen some trick plays from them at these lineouts, so pay attention to this one. It's Baker taking it conventionally. Tomlinson out. Strong carry in midfield there. Just to move it wide. Dennis King, by the way, with that big carry in midfield. Sorry, I was just, just searching him up. Tomlinson. Slightly high there, but the referee's happy with it. Tomlinson breaks around the fringes, darts around. Just snared, but he's made a couple of yards. And that's Hugo Carey again on the ball. Gets on the front foot. It's key now to get the ball away fast. Tomlinson. A lot of back and forth play here, Chris, isn't there? Sort of zigzagging about. Yeah, they're having to work really hard in attack. Both the uh, the shape, the work effort, particularly from both teams in defence, is just meaning that there isn't as much space as the attack would want. Uh, and it's just meaning perhaps they're having to uh, bosh it up and truck it up a little bit up the middle to try and create some space. But similarly, the opposition are uh, slowing it down at the breakdown. Yeah, it's impressive from reason. You can see Felstead fighting with every time they get the ball into the breakdown to just to try and get a bit of quick ball and get on that front foot. But it's impressive work from Reed. It is indeed. We've got a turnover there. Oh, well, well held in the end by Ollie Redmond. But Reed's putting the pressure on. Tomlinson gets it away though. Carey again. 
soft hands in midfield from the number eight. Plenty of noise on the touch lines. That's a sound we've all missed. Kerry again getting his hands on the ball and then moving it wide to Robertson, his back row colleague. And now Redmond flying down the wing, chips it over the top. It's all about the bounce here. Oh, so close. If he was two inches taller, he'd have had it. That horrid bounce of a rugby ball. That was anyone's game there at that moment in time. Lovely bit of work from Redmond there. Reeds get it under control, and that's a strong carry there from Robert Lewis to get them on the front foot. And the penalty comes. Felstead just a little too desperate on the floor. Yeah, just thinking, how do we open this game up? We've, we've commented on the breakdown from a defensive perspective, but I think what we're actually finding is that it's from an offensive perspective, that ball is being slowed down ever so slightly. And so I can't help but feel just perhaps being that little bit more accurate on the clear out will enable that ball to be that, that little bit quicker, uh, which then puts defences under pressure because they don't have as much time to, to get into their shape and, uh, and get their structure. Redmond with another chance to counter-attack. Moves it wide. Go see the hands out to Faulkner. Good footwork. There, just probably an example. Just a little bit slow coming in as that first man to clear out. Enabled Reeds just to slow that ball down ever so slightly. And you could see the whole game slows down and we go back into this slightly confrontational area. Stolen again by Finley Scott, who's the man you were talking about who was causing havoc at the previous breakdown, and then at the very next one, he goes and turns the ball over. He's putting a shift in there. Reeds can't quite capitalise on it, though. Scrappy ball. Sam Rowe's going to make inroads, though. And that's what you're talking about there. There's a big clear out presented nicely for the scrum half, albeit they end up using it as slow ball, but they have the opportunity. Absolutely, again, it's that decision-making. A lot of the ball has been slow, and it would just be great to see that ball that little bit quicker. That comes from the ball presentation of the ball carrier, as well as that first man in on the clear-out. Zach Washington with a big carry, but we're going to pause the game just for a second due to a nasty-looking injury. Yeah, Angus, a slightly messy few minutes, a little bit scrappy. Uh, I think all matches go through this period, and it's just a question of which team is going to grab it by the scruff of the neck and take control of it. Well, it looks as though with the with the Redmond break down the right hand side, you know, the the bounce of the ball almost, um, you know, al almost creating a brilliant a brilliant score. It's as if everyone got a bit excited at the the prospect of the game opening up, and it all went a bit hell for leather for a couple of minutes there. Yeah, and of course, within rugby, we've seen that a million times where that ball could have easily have popped up into his hands and he was in under the sticks. Uh, but of course, it bounced up that two feet above him um, and opened up again. Well, I'm minded of, uh, of Lewis rees Zamet, Wales against Scotland back in the Six Nations. You know, it, it bounces the right way and you're a hero. It bounces the wrong way and it's all, all come to nothing. Well, I think it was Gary Player, the famous golfer, said I'd rather be lucky than good. I, I'd settle for either, to be fair. <laughs> It's a short delay in proceedings here, but that, that gives us a chance to give you uh, some background on a few of these players, because there some, there's some really interesting stories for a few of these guys. Um, and I want to point out a few things. Um, so Reed's today captained by um, their blindside flanker, Charlie Hancock, who uh, was a member of the Surrey Under-17 setup in 2019, uh, and has an offer from Cambridge to go, to go and uh, study geography. So. We could well be seeing him in a Varsity match sometime soon. Of course, Varsity match taking place uh, next month up at Welford Road. Uh, vice, vice captains today are the number eight, who we've seen plenty of for, first, for Reed, sorry, uh, D Dylan Thomas and Harry Gray at 13 in the centres. So keep an eye out for both of them. Harry Gray, of course, part of the UR7s Academy and also uh, a lamb. He's off to Exeter to study geography as well. Clearly, clearly a lot of geography prowess. Is there, is there a connection between geography and rugby? Must be. No comment on that one. <laughs> Business management at Cardiff for uh, for Dylan Thomas. Much more of a, that's much more of a rugby player's degree and city. Well, well, I think what it highlights and what is great the 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 standard and the level of university rugby nowadays, particularly with the 
um, coming to the fore of the Buck Super League is meaning that a lot of young young lads and, and a, a lot of women as well are now going off to university. They're able to get their degree and play a really, really high standard of rugby. We are seeing a number of players who are leaving university and getting premiership contracts, so it is definitely another route for them to go down. Yeah, I think probably the first... 15 years of professionalism that was the great loss to, to rugby was the fact that the university game really it started to die a bit of a slow death but the last four or five years especially with the Buck Super League has, has really seen that change and certainly for, from a next gen for 15 perspective where we've been looking in on that it's it's been amazing to see. Yeah, you look at somebody like Harry Glover, who went down the university road. He was a uh, Harrow schoolboy, ended up going to university and is now setting the world on fire for, for Great Britain Sevens. Um, and after the Olympics, should he get picked, he's off to uh, Stade Francais. So again, just a really, really good example um, in the middle of that. He was Samurai Sevens as well. I must get that thrown in. So we get underway again as we say goodbye to Dennis King, who... Uh, I apologise. We say goodbye to Cameron Wallace wearing the number 16 shirt. He's been in Felstead since the prep school. He's also a footballer and toured to South Africa with Felstead back as, as a year 11. Um, it's a real shame to see him leave the field, especially after such a strong performance in this, uh, this opening quarter of the game. And Angus, I think you highlight there that there are a number of these boys would have known each other for a very, very long time, all the way back from prep school. So this is a really, really proud moment for them to take the field with their mates. Well, I've been banging on for the best part of a, a month about this, that the real reason for these games is that school rugby really is the, the biggest chance you ever get to properly play with, with your mates. Um, you know, even, even as you move through club rugby, people become your mates, but they're not the people you spend all day, every day with. School rugby is very unique from that point of view, and it's what makes it so special. Yeah, you're definitely preaching to the choir here. I agree wholeheartedly. So Reeds, after that short short break for the injury, are really on the front foot here. Attacking ball, lots of depth on this attack as well, which we haven't seen necessarily throughout the game. Darting down the short side. Uh. Just edged out into touch. Big defence there from Felstead after some strong attack in the opening couple of minutes as we restarted there from Reeds. Plenty of subs on the field now. Everyone getting a plenty of game time today. Of course, everyone abiding by that half game rule as well, where everyone gets uh, gets at least half a game when they're on the on the team sheet. Which is another really, really important introduction that the RFU have made over the years. What does make it tricky, though, with the, the number of changes, and of course we've got lar large squads tonight, that can be great for a, a fresh set of lungs and a fresh set of legs coming on, but at times you can just lose that little bit of continuity you've gained from that period passage of play. Yeah, just, just sort of changes things up a bit, doesn't it? And um, sometimes you can go through 20 minutes, you feel like you're on top, and then if everything changes up, it may well be that from that point you're not you're not on top, but you think you are in your head. <laughs> changes the way you play. Once again, a big carry from Josh Robson-Groom. He's going through a, a real shift today. And I think what we're seeing from both sides is because of the restrictions on the line-out. Oh, searing break here, Tom Jones. Oh! A lovely step from Jones. Cuts back inside. He's going to be under the sticks. What a moment for Tom Jones. Fantastic rugby from Jones. Two passes, burst through the tackle, and then a step one-on-one -on -one with the fullback, and he's flown in under the sticks. Tom Jones, what a player. And what, what was amazing with that was just to see his teammates. He had run it, run it in from almost the halfway line, and his teammates were there in support to congratulate him as he uh, ran from under the sticks. Really great to see that celebration. I'll tell you what, after a year with no rugby, I'd be waiting for him on the halfway line without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> Lovely stuff from Tom Jones. Only wish I could think of a Delilah reference. It well, looks, looks like he's going to convert it himself. What I was saying just before that lovely break occurred, that, that due to the restrictions on what people can and can't do in the line-out, and uh, as Angus mentioned early in the piece to remind you, there are, there are no malls, there's no driving line-outs. Both teams look like they're actually looking to hit it up the middle uh, and, and work some space from there. Change with the conversion then. No. Oh, well, he's, he's just pushed it wide. 
but I think I like the gesture. Felstead are giving, giving the conversions to their try scorers and they have the lead, eight points to seven. As we approach half time, we're about five or six minutes away from that half time break. He's smiling wryly as he makes his way back over the halfway line. Um, he knows he probably should have slotted that one and yet at the same time, he can really be happy with a try he scored. Superb work from James for the try though. Absolutely fantastic. Reads then for the first time in the game are behind. They hoist the kick off high. Collected as well. Onto the front foot. They just look a bit tight to me, Reeds. And it's been turned over by Felstead. Just lost forward in in the contact there. Just appeared to me there, Chris, as though Reeds, as they as they got on the front foot, they all bunched a bit and they could if they'd had the opportunity to go wide, they didn't really have the men there. And I think that's a combination. That's that's the element of not playing for, for a, a period of time. In many ways that we've come to expect the first game of a season or a pre-season game can be that little bit scrappy. But also I think we need to give some credit to Felstead as well and the pressure they're putting Reeds under. They're, they are keeping their, their men on the feet, a lot of red shirts there in order to break down and they're actually really coming forward and pressing off the line and putting Reeds under pressure. Yeah, it's been some tremendous work in the breakdown. I mean, from both sides, in, in fairness, but sort of defensively from both, um, as you mentioned earlier, a bit, of, a bit of accuracy in attack in terms of the clearing might just uh, might just put a stem on that, but it's been impressive in defence from both sides so far. No, definitely all the breakdown nauses out there. This will be a dream. Got to love them. Reads with the line out then. Straight off the top, not straight. I thought that one was going to be let slide. Just drop the ball. Yeah, it's always a tricky one, and in my experience, refs play that ever so slightly differently. If the opposition haven't gone up to compete, they often might let that go. Um, but but similarly, it is in the uh, the law book, uh, not the rule book, the law book, of course, the rugby union, uh, and that wasn't straight. And of course, what we'd expect normally is a scrum or line out option, but we get what we get instead under under the new guidelines is a free kick. And uh, Felstead look like they're just uh, just working out what to do with that. An unusual situation for these players. Looks like it's going to be a high bomb. No, quick tap forwards bursting through. Albert Smith with the carry there. And now the fast ball switching sides. Barnett just having a little dart. Dinked over the top. Now a chance for Reeds to counter if they want to. The space wide. Lovely feet there. And Zion Hunt with some brilliant footwork. Up aggressively, Felstead to make the tackle behind the gain line. And Reeds now a bit short of numbers. Kick the ball away. But we have another injury. Possibly cramp. I can sympathise. It certainly looks that way, by the way, his legs being held. But of course, you know, let's not forget these guys have not been playing rugby, and getting up to that match fitness uh, take takes a lot of time. We've had a couple of guys who have gone off with with bangs and injuries. The body has not been used to this, as we said earlier. They haven't really been training, so I guess this is to be expected. And without being silly about summer rugby and the weather, etc., it's it's 10 degrees hotter than than you'd be necessarily used to, despite the fact that it's the evening. So it will take take the energy out of the legs a little bit. It definitely will. But of course, if you if you look at the immaculate pitch, credit to the the Reeds ground staff, it is in incredible condition. It does look like a carpet out here, and there'll certainly be uh, a little bit of cushion underfoot for them as well when they're falling. Yeah. The Absolutely pristine surface, and I, I'm a fan of the blue artwork. Nice to see things being mixed up on the field. And he's back on his feet. Come off for a bit of a rest, get some Lucas aid. Hopefully, he'll be all right. We'll restart with the free kick reads as they were in possession when we stopped. I think they'll be quite happy about that. Yeah, perhaps a, a well earned rest for both sets of players there. Four minutes left in the half then. Felstead eight, Reed seven. 
the away side just just in the lead courtesy of that, uh, that wonderful Tom Jones try right from his own 22. Referee's just making sure Felstead are fully 10 yards back. And we'll tap, tap and shift wide. And it's aggressive line speed from Felstead. Hoisted high by Reeds. And Mark called. A sensible decision there, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and, and for those of you who may well be watching their first game of rugby, if a, if a ball is kicked uh, and caught with inside the 22 meter area without it bouncing, the player is able to call Mark which then means that they get awarded a, a free kick. Be Archie Faulkner searching for touch, I think. No, keeps it in field. And now Reeds go. Tom Leslie with the ball, wonderful footwork. Oh, got the off blade away, but just a bit too firm. Ed Fateski just couldn't quite get his hands on. Referee giving a warning to keep everyone on their best behavior because the cameras are here. And I think the ref's done a really, really good job as we're approaching half time. His, his communication has been very, very clear. The players have responded, but also he's made it about the players. It's worth noting as well that for referees, there's been a year with, with really very little two referees. So it's fantastic for them to be able to get back out here as well. And of course, you know, Thank goodness they all still want to. Without them, there is no game. And we've mentioned how brilliant it is for the for the upper six, for the for the guys in their last year to get out. But of course, this is also an opportunity for some of the lower six. And I think Felsen have got, got a couple of year 11 players on the bench as well. This is their perhaps their first foray into first 15, and they'll be looking to. Uh, lay a marker down for that first 15 shirt for next season. No, he hasn't taken it. He's just put it on the floor. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are. I think there are nine people in the Reed squad today who are making their debut, including actually fly half Mark Martin. Um, so it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity for all these guys, and it will stand them in good stead, as you say, for for the season ahead, which hopefully will look more like a normal season come September, as as Faulkner tries. Uh, between the legs pass, it very nearly comes off as well. It was a knock on from Reeds that we're coming back for. No advantage to Felstead. Both teams are struggling a little bit from, from these free kicks. As we said, the free kicks are replacing scrums. Uh, the referee has got to give the opportunity for the defensive line to go back. But as you can see on screen here, what that just means is that the Reeds defensive line is, a, is across the field. Uh, various options you may see. You may see an up and under kick. But both teams at the moment are, are looking forward to pop it off to a forward uh, and take it on for that first contact, as we see there. And of course, you can't go quickly either, which just reduces uh, another option that you might have. So it's those who can think outside the box the best may find they get the best opportunity off these these free kick situations. Slow ball here for, for Felstead. Reeds have done ver very well to legally slow that down, possibly deliberately at the same time. My favorite kind of back row work. It's only illegal if you get caught. Exactly. Trying very, very hard to get out of the way. I'm just doing it slowly. That's all. And we've commented on the, the brilliant defensive work at the breakdown from both teams, but I think we should now really start to focus, as we said a few minutes ago, let's look at the offensive work at the breakdown. The ball is being slowed down on almost every single occasion, allowing that defensive line to get into shape. And again, I think if I had my coach's hat on, I'd be talking to people about that, that accuracy at the breakdown. We often spoke about this idea of one man, one bullet. You have got one shot to fire, and you better clear that man out, because otherwise he's going to come in and he's going to slow that ball down for you. And one shot to fire. This penalty from Josh Robson Green will be the final action of this first half, we think. Tom James obviously ha handed over the kicking duties to, to Robson Green. He will uh, attempt to extend Felster's lead as we head in towards half time. Just squeeze that through, and as we move into half time, then Reed's trail, Reed's the host trail, Felstead seven points to 11. A couple of cracking tries in the first half, but in the end, it's the points from the boot that are making the difference here.
So here we go. We we take a look at that first try. Wonderful work from Joe Sheridan there for Reed. He's done really well there to finish it. You can just see that Felsta cover defence coming over. It's actually a wonderful tackle from Tomlinson, but he does well to get it down, doesn't he? Partly carries them over the line a bit as well with the angle he's coming and the, and the momentum, but uh, some great effort in a cover defence. So he storms down from halfway. And look at the ground that Tomlinson makes up on him. But Sheridan just just had the gas and it's actually a very very good finish to get the ball down on the deck keeping his feet in the air so he doesn't get dragged into the touch and it's actually a, a wonderful piece of decision making from the referee and on to Felstead's try in their own 22 Tomlinson moves it and it's moved wide from Will Barnett and then just Jones with that powerful move and then the lovely step inside scorches away Look at that stride length. Lovely play from Jones. And that was the try then that leveled things up. In fact, it put, it put Felstead 8-7 ahead from the, uh, the early Robson Green penalty that had narrowed things to 7-3. Jones, of course... Uh, after that lovely effort, just pushed his conversion wide. I think Felstead letting, uh, letting the try scorers take their conversions. But here we go again, Chris. Just look at this. Two passes. It's just that line he hits there at pace. He just catches the, the Reeds defence a little bit flat-footed. And then that step and go with that pace to finish. Really impressive. He does that thing that's, I think, my favourite bit of rugby skill that you actually quite rarely see which is as he receives the ball he's already moving his feet to get on the outside and I think that channel to defend in you might argue that's a 13 channel to defend in is really really difficult for those reasons because with the deception nowadays that the attacker showing you're not only having to choose which man to take you've got to choose the right man and react and as he said it I think Reed's just got caught a little bit flat-footed uh, and by the time they reacted it was it was too late so those are two tries, and that of course put uh, put Reeds, uh, sorry, put Felstead eight seven ahead, and then we we later had a Josh Robson Green penalty to to extend that to eleven seven into the halftime break. And overall, I'd say it's been it's been a pretty enjoyable half of rugby, wouldn't wouldn't you say, Chris? I think it's brilliant. I'm absolutely delighted to be here and just having a very quick chat to the ref as he come over came over for a well-earned water break. Was just saying how well the players are doing, how hard they're working, uh, and how well they are responding. He did say there's perhaps too many penalties for his liking, uh, but perhaps some of those penalties are being forced by the the great breakdown work we've spoken about. But of course, we do hope that uh, it's been a very very tight first first half. Is it going to open up a little bit in the second? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's been an ill-disciplined half from either side. It's just been sort of technical breakdown work that, that's been the result of a lot of those penalties. Looks like we're about ready to get underway, though. Fels are just finishing up their, their little huddle. I think Chev's there just uh, making a few changes, freshening things up, making sure everyone gets a good run out. Reads plenty of new faces as well. We will try and uh, try and bring you those changes as we uh, as we go through the half. Tony Talbot below us has been uh, working through things at pace. It'll be Harry Gray to kick off. Punches it deep. And it's that man, Robson, Robson Green, once again. Centre of everything today. A long clearance kick coming our way. And the aficionados would say that is tidy. Ollie Redman there with the, with the, the long clearance kick. See, seeking out the only target there is. We've got a new man throwing into the line out for Felstead, Teddy Summers. In fact, it's not. It's Pierre Garino, a year 11. Been at Felstead since the prep school. He's making his debut today. Another to have joined from Monaco. Yeah. 
That's all come from a stolen line out as a, a Reed's throw and the uh, Felster player, the pod has gone up, competed and got the ball. Very smart footwork there again from Zion Hunt. We've seen that a few times from the from the young debutant on the wing. Almost half charged, but works out quite well for Reeds in the end. Ball going out on the halfway line, and they'll have to put into this line out. We've spoken about the offensive breakdown work. I, I might quite like to actually see both sides attack that little bit wider from the breakdown. A lot of work will have been done with, with both coaches across the period of time that these boys have been at school. And uh, the, probably the most organized area is closest to the breakdown where both teams are actually attacking. The reason for that is to look to try and suck players in, but I just wonder if there might be a little bit more change to be had if they attack that little bit wider. Well, especially having having been in that pattern for sort of 36, 37 minutes of the game, the opposition might be sucked in just, just through habit now from that. Solid line out from Felstead. I thought Reeds were going to have to put into that one, but it went went Felstead's way, and now they've got the opportunity to move wide. Robson Groom fizzes it wide, doesn't quite get a hand, but they've picked it up. Scorching down the left-hand side. And there's, there's space everywhere now for them. Little dart there from the replacement scrum half. Good yards, a young Matt Dawson there in the making. Good work again from Hugo Carey. He's done a lot of work there where he's, he's carried some ball quite stationary because he's looking to get the ball away. Strong carry from J Jesse Robertson. And now Ollie Redmond stepping into the 10 channel. And Jones again puts the grubber through. Gets taken out. Scrappy on the deck. I think Washington there, like any true open side, somehow getting his nose on the ground and getting that ball. Felstead. Felstead could get the ball back. Redmond seizes it. Box kick doesn't quite go to plan. And if they can move this wide, Chris, I think they could be on. Got two. Two number eight shirts on the pitch at the moment for Felstead. That's thrown me a bit. Another darting snipe. Reeds are scrambling now. Robson Groom. Good clear out needed here, as we've been pointing out. And they get it. The question now, do they keep punching tight or do they go wide? They go a bit wider through Robertson, who makes good headway, but he's held up well by Reeds. Now they go wide. Robertson Groot's intercepted. Oh, and they're offside. It was offside. We said that Reeds was scrambling, but by heck, they scrambled really, really well there. Felster kept on knocking on the door, but Reeds would not let them through. And that's the sort of penalty to me as a, as a former schoolboy back rower where I go, that's a good penalty to give away. Not a try scoring opportunity, so it's not a yellow card, just the penalty. I don't think his coaches will be too unhappy with that. And that all came from quick ball from Felsford at the breakdown, having that attack down the right hand side. You might look back at the footage and argue, should he have held on to it rather than put the kick in? But it then just meant that Reeds were scrambling ever so slightly under pressure. Felsford got the ball back and uh, had a go at that try line. They haven't scored because of the Reeds penalty but they are having a pop at goal here. Robson Groom over the ball then. And if he slots this, it'll put them a converted try ahead. <whistles> and he does straight through the middle from Robson Groom. Puts Felstead 14-7 ahead. Nine points to him so far on a personal level. The man is having a storming game for his side. It's a really lovely strike. You can hear him hitting the ball beautifully from where we are, about 30 metres away. A lovely technique. Mark Martin to kick off then. Felt Reed to been changing around who takes their kickoffs, but Martin on debut takes this one. Hoists it nice and high. Well timed there from uh, from 
from Jack Wallerspoon, just allowing Oli Redmond to get his feet on the ground before he made the tackle. And of course, from the kickoff, there's decisions to be made. Do you kick long, put the opposition deep into their territory and say, come back at us? Or do you go short and compete for that ball back? Both teams so far look like they're going long in that territory. That is, that is Tom Gilbert uh, back in charge of throwing into the line out. Heavily strapped elbow. Great little chat from one hooker to another. Just giving that little bit of a chat about that straight throw. Any level, we get that little bit of banter. Front rowers, they're the same whatever level you're at. All done with a smile on their faces. Gilbert gets in, it's fast off the top. A little dart from the replacement scrum half here. Jumps left. take that all back it was Adam Spencer throwing into the lineup apologies head boy as well I do apologize to him Reed's just taking their eye off the ball there just before it was caught and a knock-on advantage to Felsted Jones drops it on his foot scramble for it on the deck but Still advantage, Felstead will come back for that free kick from the knock-on. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Felstead do off this free kick. Are they going to put it up? Are they going to be a bit more creative? Or uh, are we going to follow the script, give it to a forward to take it up and uh, make that first contact? I would like to see a, a high bomb. We're going to go for that traditional option, though. And a big carry there from, from Jesse Robertson. Robson Groom gets it through his hands. Hugo Carey on a big carry there. Charges through, but what work on the floor there from Finley Scott. He doesn't get the turnover, but he slows the ball down exceptionally. Jones gets the ball away. Reeds though knocking Felstead backwards in the tackle, but good work there from uh, young John Taylor Anton. Gets them back on the front foot, and it's a big carry again from Ollie Kelly, but he's driven backwards in the tackle. Fantastic defense from Reeds. The rocket ball. We'll see if we can learn what that might be. And what you can see when Felstead are attacking so narrowly, it's actually not changing the picture in defense. It's only engaging two or three Reeds players and the rest of them are able to just make their way across in the defensive line. Just by moving it that little bit wider or just mixing up that point of contact might open up opportunities and spaces. Yeah, and almost sort of epitomizing what you're saying there. They felt they've run out of options a bit, put the kick in and it's, it's kind of gone a bit wrong. Robson Groom down, but bounces back on his feet. Something tells me that he's a man who is not going to leave the field without some persuasion. Sevens player, you'll be you'll be interested to know, Chris. Very interested. Part of the Saracens Academy since he was an under 15. And, uh, we'll be playing be playing National One with Bishop Stortford uh, next year in National One. Which I can tell you is a tough league to move into as a, as a former schoolboy straight into National One. That's that's, that's old-fashioned physical rugby right there. He's got off the top, but well through from Felstead to stop the ball from getting away. So we'll have a tight carry here. It's good work though from, uh, from Sebastian Hyde. Makes a bit of ground. Slow ball though for Reeds. Oh, great running though. Charlie Hancock can't be put down. And now Reeds are on their front foot. Now they can they get the quick ball? They can't. Hyde with another short carry. Momentum slightly taken out of that attack though. Good ball presentation though. Now they have it. Shipped wide, gets through the hands, but it's intercepted from Jones. 
Jones is away. Jones is clear. Nobody's going to catch him. Jones with his second try from over 60 meters. Wow. Heartbreaking for Reeds. But from Jones, he just spotted that the opportunity was there. And he's gone 60 yards with that one. He's made the decision there to go to go for the intercept. It was the right one. If he didn't get it, Reed's actually had a two-man overlap. So it's high risk, but high reward. You could see exactly what uh, what Reeds were looking to do there. As, as Hancock got it, it was clear that the, the, the aim was to get the ball through the hands, get it wide. And Jones has spotted it. And from the moment he had that in his hands, there was never any doubt. Interestingly for this one, he's opted opted against taking the kick. He's, uh, he's letting his pal Robson Green take control of this one. Knocks them over to put his side 20, 20, 21 7 ahead. And not only will he have some brilliant, brilliant memories like all these players, the fact that he'll have this on video for the rest of his life, he can tell his grandchildren about it. Uh, great for Samurai to be supporting all these players, creating their memories. Tom Jones, he'll be joining e Ealing and Brunel University on a scholarship at the end of this season. He'll be able to tell everyone when he's in his university halls. I, I genuinely did go twice from 60 metres. I can prove it. Strong carry from Jesse Robertson. And Reed's now with their tails up. Uh, sorry, Felstead with their tails up, rather. Sticking it wide, a lovely take. Just offside. Oh, fine margins. It was a lovely idea. It's what we've been crying out for from the free kicks. They go from open play, and it was it must have been close. But that's that point I was making, that Felstead now, with their tails up, they're going to start trying things. Now they've got a bit of a margin between the two of them. Reeds with the tap, though. And it's Finley Scott taking control of things himself and smashing his way over. The inside centre says, thank you very much. I think I'll take control from here, lads. And boy, does he. That almost looked a bit too easy. Well, he's got some quads on him, and boy, does he use them here. Just smashes his way through. Felstead defenders fall away slightly. The big man coming running at them from short range. There was some real power on show there. Good bit of leadership there from the inside centre, Finley Scott. UR7's academy player, off to Exeter next year. Handy cricketer as well. And he'll be lining up the conversion. Looks like an all-round sportsman. It looked like there was a little bit of a loss of connection just in that Felster defensive line there, and he picked the space and drove straight through it. Fair play. Well, I wonder if the fact that he's got a 12 on his, on his back made the defence think perhaps he's going to try and do something a bit different here rather than rather than come barrelling through the middle, but Scott saw his opportunity and stormed through. Well, I have to say there are some very, very big boys on display here. I'm not quite sure I'd fancy tackling him there. No, I'd be, sh I'd be shying well away. Just pushes the conversion wide. It was a long one. And that narrows things down to 21-12. Reed's clawing things back against Felstead after a couple of... Uh, oh, I felt a try and a couple of penalties early on in this second half. That's a really important score, as you say, Angus. It pulls Reed reads back into it on the scoreboard. It will just give them that little bit of a lift and uh, ask some questions of Felsted. A real shame there. The uh, sun seems to have disappeared and we've got a light bit of rain. Uh, that really, really tricky amount of rain that comes down that just makes that ball a little bit slippy, which has caused the knock on there. Thank you. Zion Hunt takes the tap. It's chipped wide fast. Jones though, under pressure in defence. Good footwork to get himself free. Gets on the front foot. 
good ball presentation to allow the st stab through. Robson Groom dives on it. Glorious bit of work. Stab through, as you were saying, greasy conditions, greasy ball, greasy floor. What do you do? Stick it on the floor, dive on it. Perfect. Well, of course, Jones is looking for his hat trick here. He pulled in some defenders. And of course, another, there was a little bit of space out wide, but the execution was absolutely superb. Very rugby league-esque. And there we go. It's Redmond, who we've seen taking kickoffs. We know he's a good footballer, stabs it through. And Robson Groom wins the foot race. Just inside the five line, Big okay. early dive. Inside the six line. I think that was obviously a pre-plan between those two players. You could see Robson Groom start to make his run just as that ball was dropped onto the foot. And as he went through, he already had the momentum. Lovely weighted kick in what is quite a small dead ball area uh, to go through for the score. Love, lovely try. And it's Robson Groom that will be in charge of the conversion as well. His own personal points tally now up at 16, looking to add another couple to it. It's a low scudder, but it doesn't quite make it. So it's 26-12 to Felstead after that Robson Groom try. Just getting that sense, the game's opening up a little bit. These players will be tired. They will have not been conditioned for 70 minutes worth of rugby. Uh, and this is where mistakes can occur, but also opportunities for, for players to hit those spaces, hit those kicks. And we move into the second drinks break of the afternoon, or the evening now as it is, with the scores Reeds 12, Felstead 26. The away side with a couple of tries in the second half to pull a, a, a strong advantage ahead. Reads between those two tries, they managed to managed to get on the score sheet, and uh, and we thought that was the the start of a comeback, but almost immediately spilled from the restart, and Felstead put the pressure on and get the try, and the best possible response to what what could have been a bit of a sucker punch response when Finley Scott scored. Absolutely, if we r rewind a few minutes for that intercept try, that could have easily have been Reeds in at the corner, but in fact it's Felsted who are in under the sticks, which turns into seven points. So although Felsted looked like they're pulling away on the scoreboard, this match is still all to play for and still very, very tight. Yeah, when the story of this game is told, no matter what the, the scores end up as, it's, it's, far, it's far closer than, uh, than it currently looks and uh, it could easily end up very close. You can imagine the coaches are now saying to the players, as it has been a frantic few minutes, just take your breath, just calm it down, uh, have your clear focuses about what you're trying to do. And it's the same old thing that you hear every season, every match at every level. Let's really focus on doing the basics right. Let's look to clear out. Let's look to present that ball. Let's look to complete those tackles and pass and catch being so important. We have seen Jones with a little bit of magic who has kind of separated the two sides. Uh, which in many ways has been the difference. But I think here's now an opportunity for both sides just to take their breath, consolidate, and almost go again. Absolutely. And um, just while we're, while we're on the break here, I just want to bring you some, some news from elsewhere. We've had uh, a, a load of games on today. Uh, in the early kickoff, fantastic game between Warwick and Dulwich College that went Warwick's way. I believe the score there was 28-12, quite similar to how things are here. Uh, we had Gordon's up against the Oratory, where, where there was a, a drum band and a, I think a steel band leading them onto the pitch for the, the final game of the, the season for both. I think for, for Gordon's it was their third game actually in this window and for the Oratory their second. Gordon's of course now partnered with Harlequins as well. Uh, and there's a number of other games going on and hopefully, hopefully we'll have news from them as things go on. But we're underway again here. Reed's kicking off and Tomlinson moves it wide to the Danger Man Jones again. Ships it wide further. Stepping back inside. And off goes Jesse Robertson. You can just feel that tempo has gone up a notch again after this break. It's that width that you were talking about earlier, isn't it? Two, two passes there just to move the ball wide and suddenly the game is open. Robson Groom, though, spots some space deep in the backfield of Reeds. Just, oh, no. I thought that was going to slip over, but Sam Rose seen a counter-attacking opportunity. Gets himself midway through the 22. 
buys a scrum half some space. Will Barnett gets it off the field. Reeds have done well there. This is starting to be slightly tricky conditions, but fails to put some pressure in, which means that they're going to have the line out just inside the Reed 22. Yeah, and I guess with the lead, Felstead now have the, the freedom to kind of go after the game with there's really no repercussions of, of making a mistake now. Whereas for, for Reed's accuracy is, is what it's all about, but hopefully they don't feel too inhibited to just go out and take a few risks still. Yeah, pressure takes various formats, and of course, this isn't a win at all cost game. The guys will be delighted, they'll be pouring their hearts out, and the effort is not under question. But of course, we do keep score, and that score itself can be a form of pressure. Reed steal the line out though. And they're now back in possession. Looking to go for strong tackling again from Felstead. Slow the ball up. Playing an advantage. High ball. Tomlinson gets it, gets it away, gets them on the front foot. Back on his feet, sharply gets it away from the breakdown. Cooper Baker with the carry there. Been used to seeing him working on the floor in this game. But it's him that's turned over. That's a hell of a steal. And I think it's that man. Is it Zion Hunt again, I believe? Ellis Dunford, I apologise. Ellis Dunford with his third turnover of the game. But it's back in Reed's in Felstead possession. Ball squirts free, though. Reeds have stolen it back. Toing and froing here in the, in, in the Surrey drizzle. Well, as we said, that last drinks break has just given both teams the opportunity. It seems that everyone's press restart. They've put new batteries in. The energy levels are high. The contact and are collisions and the breakdown work exceptional again. That's what that one's come off Scott's, Scott's shin, but he's coming in for the pile driver of a tackle. And the bodies come flooding in behind him to make more tackles. The dart from Tomlinson almost away. Just had his leg taken out from under him. A really important scrag there. He was away. Felstead put boot to ball through Barnett. Moved themselves 15 yards up the field. You can see there was a little bit of a little bit of space there. I'm not sure he would have wanted that to go out. There were two two of his teammates who were following up. That just a little bit of execution, keeping that ball in the field, may have opened things up a bit more. Spencer to throw in then. Collected nicely, and it's away quickly. But a dart here from Miles Billington. He's back on the field after after a rest earlier on. But. Baker giving, giving away the penalty by trying to stop that quick ball. So Martin has a quick dart, but will come back for the penalty as Grubber three tidied up nicely. And I think Reeds will look to the corner here. Yeah, we're just starting to see that sniping off the line out working quite well for Reeds. We've seen two separate players at nine who have managed to snipe the way through. Felstead look intent on putting pressure on that first receiver, which is actually opening space for the, for the Reeds dummy half, the nine. And it's Billington there with the with the touch finder. He's found a good touch. Takes the side to seven or eight yards out. Here's a real opportunity for Reed. You kind of feel they've got to put a bit of pressure in here and they're going to have to come away from this with points. An unusual setup on this line out as well. It looks as though they're keeping the scrum half ten yards back using the eight in the scrum half channel. And it's a big carry there. Dylan Thomas forward momentum Spencer now with the carry gets the offload away goes to hand it's good defense from Felstead to slow it up and Baker all over it again Billington wide Washington now collects the offload from Charlie Hancock and it's Zach Washington that's trotting in on the left hand side 
And the game is definitely not done yet. Well, we said Reeds had a great opportunity there. They had to come away with points, and they certainly have. That's five. Can it turn into seven? Game on. Well, and we said earlier, would Reeds retain the ambition to, to get those offloads in, to get that exciting play? Two offloads in that, in that period of play that really created that opportunity. And it was a lovely offload there from Charlie Hancock, just drew the players in that basketball-esque pass over the top. We've got to remember, these are really cr greasy conditions out here, and they made it look really, really easy. Well done. Well, it's a tough decision to make sometimes, I think, as well, as you, you want to draw the man. But sometimes when they come at you at that high angle, getting your body right to be able to get the ball away is a difficult skill. Scott just pushes the conversion wide. I thought it was going over. 26-17 in Felstead's favour, but Reed's narrowing the gap and there is plenty of time left in this game for them to come back. We could be in for a big dramatic finish here. And that was a, a big kick as far as the scoreboard's concerned because what it means is Felstead are two, still two scores ahead. Ollie Redman with the kick off, collected nicely. Reed's do the first bit of the job well. Jack Wotherspoon with a big carry, gets the ball away. And now Spencer. And now it's Washington, the try scorer away. He gets his offload away, but it's just drifted into touch. But there we go. We see what a try does. The ambition. Wonderful play from Reeds. Oh, it's just absolutely energized, Reeds. I'm, I'm a fan here watching that. Lovely take off the kickoff. Lovely bit of footwork. Always good to see a really good technical fend. Offload, couple of passes and a bit of pace out the outside. There were some arms raised about possibly that final pass. But of course, we go with what the uh, referee says. Lovely passage of players taking Reeds right back into the Felstead half and put them under pressure on their own throw in the line out. Baker collects in the line out. Tomlinson ships it wide. Felstead looking to go, but it's risky, but it's paying off. Harry, Cr Harry Clenshaw almost getting himself away. It was risky play in their own 22 there from Reed for him, Felstead, but it almost came off. Oh, look, you love to see it. It's great to see the ambition. They're looking to attack from, from deep. We have seen that if the ball goes to hand and they've got space, they can go the length, but there's no doubt that Reeds have been buoyed by this last passage of play. Well, and as we've seen, it, it's worth taking these risks because if, if it works, the reward is just so good. Especially for those of us watching. Charlie Hancock then with a the big carry. And another little dart from Billington, who's been doing that since he's come back on. Another strong carry. The, the Reeds' tails are up here. Billington with another dart, gets the ball away to Hancock. Hancock, of course, his offload it was that created that score earlier on. We've got a Reed's penalty advantage here as well. Still under advantage. Billington with another dart. Gets through the first tackle. Scragged a bit, but gets the ball well presented. Big tackle. Big, big tackle. Reed still with the advantage they so will come back for the penalty. And I can't imagine that Finley Scott's going to do anything other than instruct this ball, go straight into the corner. But it looks like Billington's going to tap instead. And it's Jack Wotherspoon who takes the big carry. Reed spot the options though. Thumping tackle from Felstead. And they regather. Knocked on in the tackle, there. says the referee, I think. I think that was a really good decision from Reed there from that penalty. We, we called it going for the corner, but actually there was no opportunity for a catch and drive. Felstead have the opportunity at the subsequent line out in order to go and compete. 
so by taking that quick tap penalty, it enables them to keep a hold of the ball. Well, absolutely. As uh, as you were saying, if we're going to if we're going to be using these free kicks for and tap uh, tap penalties, we want to we want to see a bit of innovation. We got a bit of that there. A little bit of interaction there between the referee and Cooper Baker, the Felstead 7, debating whether he wanted a yellow card or not. I think they've settled on no yellow card. I think a little bit of frustration boiling over there. Hancock gets another offload away. And now Martin, on debut, of course, remember, gets the ball away as well. Another big reads carry. And some of their carriers are really starting to step up as we move towards the business end of this game. Through the hands of Martin. Sam Rowe now. Another strong carry. It's arguable that Felstead are beyond the ball there. And the referee agrees and gives the penalty. Would you take the points? I always like going for the score. If you, if you score, it's the right decision. If you don't, it's not. But I always like to have the ambition there. They seem to have the ascendancy at the moment going forwards. Felstead are giving away those penalties. And you just think that if Reeds can just keep on going, the floodgates might well open in this passage of play. And it looks like Finley Scott agrees with you. Dylan Thomas gets himself over the game line early on. But it's been turned by Felstead. Crucial turnover there. And Redmond now with a big clearing kick. Gets it off the field, but only four or five yards outside of his 22. It's a good kick from where he was on the field, but Reeds will still have the pressure on. Felstead have done really well to keep their composure there. Reeds were knocking on the door very, very hard, and Felstead were just starting to lose their way a little bit, little bit in defence. They've managed to cause the turnover there, and that kick, albeit not too far away from outside their 22, will still give some, some time and some opportunity, a little bit of breathing space to collect themselves and go again. So we start again with Spencer at the line out. Billingham ships it wide, and now Scott. And a big run here from Harry Gray. But he spilled it in contact, and Felstead, no, that's a big moment. Under five minutes left to play. Well, Felstead have got what they wanted now. They've got that ball back. Lovely little break again by Reeds, but a really solid, solid tackle. It was a chop tackle that just put that reads uh, grip on the ball under pressure, slight knock on there. Uh, of course, we would say it's a scrum down. It's not, it's a free kick. Uh, you'd probably think they are going to try and kick this as far down the field as possible, get as far away from their goal line as possible. Of course, in doing so, they give the line out to reads, but they won't mind that so much. And Tom Jones, just with the, uh, what, what did England used to call it back in the day, the old Kit Kat? Just uh, a bit of cramp. Let's, let's calm things down, lads. Let's just take a bit of sting out of this. So sceptical, Angus. I say it as a compliment. Perhaps a realist. <laughs> Reads them with the attacking ball. Not quite straight, though. Two back-to-back -back errors there from Reeds that they could have done without. And Felstead now with the decision to make. Do they go for more territory or do they try and play from here? Or indeed, does Robson Groom use that boot of his and go for the sticks to extend the advantage out? I don't think he can, actually. That's a free kick. I take that back. They go short down the left-hand side, pumping the legs there. I think that's up Archie Faulkner. Another huge, big carry from Hugo Carey. He's been stepping up throughout this game for those sort of carries. Let's go. 
No release on the floor there. Free kick to Felstead. Referee just got himself in the way, so Felstead will have a chance for a, a free kick play here. They certainly won't be running down the clock. They'll be going for another score. Yes, it is. Robertson with the carry. And there's a bit of momentum there. Carey again. Time and time again, he's put his hand up in this game. And now it's why Tomlinson found, finds himself out on the left wing. Does well not to be stripped, but it's just spilled in the tackle. And uh, Ryan Davis there, the lower sixth uh, replacement scrum half. I think that's why Tomlinson's out on the wing. Have it, doing the old scrum half classic, taking the quick tap. Oh, it's not ours, is it? Oh, it's just, I just thought it was. It was Reeds' turn there to strength, scramble for, for dear life in the corner. Uh, they managed to hold them out, and there's a, a bellow from the opposite touchline of two minutes to go, two minutes to go. Two minutes indeed. Time is running out for Reeds. Seven points, but more than seven, I apologize. Nine points behind. They need two scores to level this or beat them. So they run it out from their own 22. Sebastian Hyde with the big carry. Martin chips over. There is space there. But Felstead gather. Good defense from Rizzo. They chase up that kick well, close down the threat. Finley Scott itching to get the ball at the breakdown. Baker now. Here we go. There's a bit of space down the right hand side. Redmond gets himself away. Oh, Jones was looking for the offload. But it'll be Harry Clenshaw that takes it in now. Clenshaw just doing too much work on the floor when he had the ball. I think he was held in the tackle. Time is ticking. Reeds are those two scores behind. You'd love to see a length of the field try here. Watch is stopped. They're not just dithering. Don't worry. Harry Gray with the ball in his hands. He's going to send this one as long as he can. Oh, wonderful bit of play from Redmond to keep it in. Andy regathers. Superb from Redmond. And that could be the game, that one piece of skill from him. Kerry again puts his hand up and says, give it to me. I'll do this. Don't worry, lads. Baker gets it away. And reads the old fashioned. And it's out. And that is it. Felstead win with their one and only game in 2020 2021. 26 17, a fantastic game of rugby here at Reed School. Reeds were coming back into it, but that brilliant little bit of play from Ollie Redmond to keep the ball in field from the Reeds penalty secured the ball for his team and that's allowed them to seal this game off a wonderful performance from from Reed from Felstead dogged from Reeds to try and stay in it but in the end it's those little bits of magic from Felstead that have made the difference here today yeah what a terrific contest and that final whistle you could see just what it meant to all the players Felstead absolutely delighted you can see the Reeds lads are, are a bit gutted uh, but both sides contributed to a terrific game. Really, really well done to, to both sides. Uh, we do keep the score, and unfortunately, there's going to be winners and winners and losers on the scoreboard. Uh, but, but certainly, you can see just how much it means to the Reeds players as they're hugging each other for the first and last time 
uh, of this of this uh, COVID struck season, but also you can see the the absolute respect and the sportsmanship shown by both sides. They've gone at each other for 70 minutes, handshakes and hugs with the opposition. Uh, it was great to be here tonight. Great to be here on behalf of Samurai Sportsway in order to uh, provide our support to school sport. Well, and a, a big thank you from from us here at Next Gen 15 to you, Chris, and to Samurai for for helping support us. Without the help from from Samurai, we we wouldn't really be able to get the these things done. And uh, and our thanks to Biospan as well, because genuinely, without without that support, we wouldn't be able to do these. Let's have a look at the tries then. First of all, in the uh, in the first half, Reeds with this absolutely scorching effort down the right hand side, almost stopped, but not quite. It was uh, it was young Joe Sheridan that made made that. Tomlinson almost got across to him, but he got he did well to get the ball down, didn't he? He did indeed. Lovely finish. And here we go. I think this is the pick of the tries for me. The line that Jones takes. We see it better on the next angle, but the step there. And just the gas to accelerate away. We won't talk about the conversion. I'm sure his mates will, though. Here we go. This is the angle. You can see the, the, the angle he takes to get through that gap, Chris. Yeah, and just, just look at the line he takes here and, and where he's actually running from. Taking that ball at pace. He's just gone on the outside, almost a bit Brian O'Driscoll-esque there as he drifts on the outside shoulder. He's through a gap, and as you've said, he's got the pace to finish it from 75, 80 metres. You've got to love that step. Brian O'Driscoll-esque. He'll be taking that all the way to his grave. Mum, Dad, I was, I was, I was compared to Brian O'Driscoll <laughs> on TV. Reese got themselves back into the game, though, didn't they? And it was that man Finley Scott, the little bulldozer at inside centre, who when they uh, when they got the the penalty after oh so oh, sorry I'm wrong, it was the Tom Jones intercept. So good he did me even on replay. And we'd seen it all before, hadn't we? We knew as soon as he got that he was scoring. And it was that moment that was perhaps the difference on the scoreboard. But as we're going to see in a moment, it was absolutely terrific to see Reeds come back into this match. Just does so well to step in, make it, as you were saying very early on, makes a decisive decision. He chooses that that's what he's going to do. And, and in making it decisive, that's what gets him away. It's hugs all round here between the players. Finley Scott it was that came charging back for Reeds with a really big piece of carrying. Felstead defenders were, were not wanting to get in the way of that big barreling inside centre from Reeds. Finley Scott storming over and a real bit of leadership there. And, and I have to say throughout the game, he really impressed me with his attitude of just wanting to put in the work for his side. Yeah, I think there, there was definitely some, some standout players in the match, but the work rate from all the players uh, in, in both large squads was absolutely outstanding. Really, really well done, as we said, to both sets of players. Uh, we must also say well done to the referee, and of course, one important group of people we've missed out today are the parents. And then this is the final try of the game. Lovely little stab through from Redman and Robson Groom, who I have to say I was very impressed by throughout the game sliding over to finish things off and it was at that point that the game really was out out of reach robson green works his way around as tom jones is making his uh his bust up through the middle there and the ball goes wide redman pre-planned move as chris was saying stabs it through and on that greasy surface as the rain started to drizzle down robson green spots the skidding ball and gets down on it And as we finish up looking through these tries, at either end of the field, we've got parents taking photos of the boys all together. And in all honesty, that's what all this is about. Forget the game, forget the score, forget 
any of it really forget any of the usual talk about rugby or school rugby or anything this is what this entire afternoon this entire month what tomorrow's festival over at isha between four schools this is what it's all about it's about being able to play with your mates it's about your parents being able to be proud and watch you it's about being able to pull on that shirt that frankly for most schools has more history than just about any rugby club in the country in some cases more rugby history than the rfu itself schoolboy rugby is a very very special thing it is indeed and for some of these boys it will be the end of an era uh, playing with their mates, they'll be going off to other places, whether it's gap years, universities, or, or into work next year. And for other players, it will be the, the starting point of their uh, their journey in a first 15 shirt as well. All lads will always aim to leave the leave the shirt in a better place than, than when they found it, and just pass that on to the generations. Absolutely, and and we've seen that in every every game we've been at, and we've been lucky enough to live stream a couple of a couple of these games, and we're. We're hoping to be able to bring you more over the course of the next month as, uh, as Scotland opens up and, and possibly as Wales opens up. They uh, they may have some seasons in June. We're looking to bring you some games from there as this uh, weird and wacky 2020-2021 season continues. But in England, this is it. The final rugby will be tomorrow. Sadly, no live stream of that one, but you'll have Millfield, Sedbert, Epsom College, and Whitgift all competing down at Isha RFC plus the under 18 academy games and then it's end of season and exams fun 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 closing up here though all finished Reed 17 Felstead 26 an absolute pleasure of a game to bring you from next gen 15 Felstead just about edging it with some some moments of magic Tom Jones with two scorching tries finished off with a third from Robson Groom Finley Scott and Zach Washington in response from Reeds but just not quite enough for the home side Felstead with their one and only game of the season take the victory <laughs>